Hey guys, it's Grimner here, and once again I'm here with another build guide slash review. This is also going to be an early build, as per usual. And this time we're looking at the last Primalist Mastery, which is going to be a Druid. And as you can see, it's a Swarm Blade based build. I guess I'll first jump into a level 85 area, show you off uh, what the build does, so you can kind of see what the gameplay looks like. Some people request like boss skills and stuff. I'm not really going to do that for these early builds. You can kind of see what it does and you, you can just assume that, you know, you can kind of kill bosses in general. I just think that the boss killing aspect is very dependent on the player itself as, you know, you can just stand into Lagon's uh, uh, beams or something and instantly die and then be angry at me that you can't kill it or something like that. So. Yeah, it can kill Lagon, the level 75 one. I just did it. It was very easy, no issues at all. Overall, the build is very tanky. Uh, I haven't really had any issues with survivability. The damage is good. Uh, the leveling is some, some would say a little bit of a nightmare, I guess. Uh, let me explain, I guess. Uh, it's kind of confusing. Uh, I got stuck trying all sorts of skills and realizing that most of them kind of don't really work in a uh, leveling environment. Like the bear. Not the summon bear, but the bear form. Which is the first skill that you get. It's not really that good. It's pretty clunky. Ah. Uh, I don't know, I think it's not very balanced if you look at the Swarm Blade and if you look at the Spriggan form. They are way, way better than the Bear. I mean, you can probably make some crazy build with the Bear, but uh, if you want some sort of a more uh, beginner friendly build, just don't touch the Bear, like at all. Uh, maybe if you make some sort of a transition build that trans transitions from uh, Swarm Blade to the Bear. Maybe that, yes, but in general, just don't touch it. Ah, oh, stupid. Oh, I hate him so much. Just stop. Leave me alone with your ice thingies. But as you can see, like, <laughs> I've had a lot of builds. Well, not a lot, but the previous, previous Primalists would have just died there like straight up and this guy didn't really even break a sweat in terms of uh, how much damage it took. I have lots of uh, life gain on hit and all of that good stuff. So that's uh, kind of what the gameplay looks like. Obviously I wasn't really paying too much attention to what I was doing there, but in general, that's what you do You just run around, uh, use your dive, to move in, use your Swarm Strike to get your Howl or your Spriggan to proc. Uh, and you will see what's all that about in a moment. Skills. First off, when you're leveling, just use the usual Primalist Upheaval setup. Maybe even get some uh, points into Beastmaster early on. And just get like a bear and stuff uh, because the I don't know spring and form you can use that but obviously you have to spec uh, more into spells as I was going for more of a melee build I just tried the bear bear and it sucked so until you can get swarm blade form just do the usual upheaval stuff uh, first skill will be ice stones uh, that's a skill that I have there because I don't really have anything else to put there. Honestly, this build could work only with these three skills. With the Sp Swarm Blade, Serpent Strike and Wolf. Maybe even better than it works now. Uh, actually, not maybe. It, it would work probably better, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, 
that's what you can do. You can just use Bramble Armor and Spell Thorns. So when you get hit, there's a 40% chance that it will cast Ice Thorns. He, then you use Thorn Barrier, which just gives you more armor for the duration. Which is just like a nice little buff for your survivability, I suppose. Then the main thing is Swarm Blade. First thing you want to get is Viper's Call and Endless Pressure. Viper's Call gives you uh, your arm, arm Blade Slash uses your Serpent Strike tree, which is pretty strong. This is pretty nice, I think. That's one of the main reasons why Swarm Blade form is the best form skill early on, because you just instantly get like a connection to a different skill. Endless Pressure just for the Rage uh, sustain. Then you go for base crit and of course Grasshopper's Frenzy which gives you uh, rage on crit or your locust crit. That's kind of one of the main things you want to uh, gain, get so you can stay in swarm blade form forever. The end game main thing is Inspiring Swarm uh, because it uses your companion ability after Swarm Strike which has 3 second cooldown. Uh, so, you can potentially just remove the Summon's Brigand and have your Wolf and you will have his Howl up 100% of the time. And that's pretty good. Uh, let's move on to Serpent Strike and after that I'll explain you why what's up with the Wolf Howls. Serpent Strike, uh, Kill Threshold very good for killing bosses uh well obviously anything that is under 18 percent you will kill instantly 18 percent health that is so some of the super late game bosses it can just save you like 30 seconds or like a minute or more of just smacking them really nice base crit obvious choice and confidence i would say just grab all three points in this and more or less don't mind this cluster. You can kind of do whatever you want with it. I would say this side with uh, all the dots and everything is mostly pointless unless you really, really spec into the dot side of things. So I would say grab these three points. Uh, just grab one point here and then get the attack speed, some shred, maybe some bleed, some something, dodge rating, whatever. All of this stuff, you know, you can go for that. I hope you can't hear my cat meowing right now because he's an asshole. Ah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's what you want with your Serpent Strike. Well, the main thing is right here, basically. And then the Wolf. First thing you go for on the hunt, and then you go for these points. Rush Snarl, because that will give... Uh, your wolf a uh, chance to hold on your kill that is super OP and also gives you increased 100% increased melee damage that is nuts and as I said you can keep this up 100% of your time if you remove the spriggan because you obviously proc your wolf only only your wolf if you have only the wolf obviously I am right now using the Spriggan just because I want to maintain 100% crit chance and the Spriggan is kind of broken in this sense. I think that they have kind of screwed this up. Uh, so basically what the Spriggan does, it has uh, a skill that, well, this is the skill. Uh, that's the active on the Spriggan. It basically heals stuff. And what this is, Aura of Retribution gives you base crit chance of 8% and 72% crit avoidance. That is completely broken. And I thought it was broken when I thought that it is on the activated skill when she has the little aura up. That is not the case. It's actually the healing aura that just restores health to everyone around the Spriggan. So it's up permanently. That is insane. It's completely busted. 
I don't know what the hell were they thinking, but yeah, that's just broken as hell. I think if I would remove it, my crit chance would be like, yeah, it's 57%. It's, it's really, really busted. So, yeah. Uh, I don't know. Just, it's, it's really nuts. But yeah, you kind of need this if you want the crit chance. I would say you can just get a weapon that has uh, like implicit crit chance. And then you can just remove, remove the spray gun. Yeah, you can just leave this up. Why not? Doesn't really cost you anything. So yeah, I remove this Priggan later on. But yeah, for now, this is kind of what it is. And as you already saw on the level 85 area, it still does really good damage and the survivability is really good. And let's move on with the passives. The primalist part is pretty simple and the usual kind of melee class-ish stuff. Some health companion health grab this so you can grab the survival of the pack for some melee leech for you and your minions and also some melee damage uh, hunter's restoration just helps you sustain a little bit more health and also heal your minions with the hunter's emanation uh, probably don't really need the primal medicine and ancient call doesn't really do too much uh, that, like I don't really use potions too much and the health recovery on that is not really that good for your minions it doesn't really heal that much in general you want to grab ancestral weaponry as well I was just using very different weapons all the time trying all kinds of stuff out so I didn't have it but when you have an axe for sure grab this you know 50 no that's 40 flat physical damage that is insane. Yeah, so you want to have that. Then we move on to Druid Mastery. First thing, Chitinous Plating. Obviously can just grab 5 points in this for the armor and endurance. Really helps you out. Your locusts as well. Uh, Spirit Warden. I just grabbed it because I needed some more points so I can grab Rageborn. Uh, Druidic prowess, obviously nice. Strength, attunement, all of that stuff helps you out, helps your minions out. Very important part is the focused wrath, as this helps you with your rage DK. I, at this point in this build, how it is right now, exactly how it is, I probably could just do without this. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you can just see for yourself if your gear and everything is more or less exactly the same you can safely remove this it's not necessary but i would say probably just keep it up and play around with it try it maybe without that and if you can just leave it out maybe you don't need it and just grab something else i don't know well something whatever uh, this is not super important grab it or don't grab it you can pick something else this is important, that's your crit chance, plus you get health leech on crit 4%, that is very nice for your survivability, obviously. Force of nature, just, you know, flat physical damage for you, your minions, and your locusts have armor shred chance. That helps you quite a bit as well. And then the last thing, Rageborn, bunch of crit chance, and the main star of the show rage gain on crit plus two without that this build would be quite trash you need you would need like every possible way of getting rage and even then sometimes you would just run out except for like when you're fighting bosses with this you can just sustain it 100 percent always you just don't care about rage at all and next, I would suggest you just grab Impervious, probably all five points, and then you can just go for some Height Skin. I've grabbed some uh, Beastmaster nodes as well, your Sense, your sense Strength, eh, just some Strength, so you get some more damage, and also Armor, and damage taken from nearby enemies, minus 16%, really strong, as you are mostly fighting 
enemies at close range. Aspect of the boar, I would suggest you grab uh, four points into that. Grab some point, points in poor sign rest constitution and then grab some points in primal strength so you can you have a chance of getting aspect of the boar on melee hit that would make your build way tankier well it is already super tanky but it would be even more tankier more health companion health very good and also heal amount on companion ability use 100 that's also good uh, I actually don't know I haven't really tested it because it's really hard to try it out but I think it also it heals you when you don't use it yourself when it procs as well but I don't know I think it does work like that so it's really good and then just grab some aspect of the shark because why not you can also go for the aspect of the shark on your minions but it doesn't really do much as your minions are kind of weak in this build they're just like supporting you so my stats uh, pretty good strength some attunement health 1.5k pretty decent resists pretty much maxed out armor is okay not super crazy crit chance as i said 101 percent and we have uh, crit avoidance 72 and endurance is also pretty decent ish ah uh, with a weapon i would say you probably the best one would be to pick something similar to this uh, like odachi or the trident uh, just try to aim for as high melee crit multi as you can and then go for melee flat fizz and probably f just increased physical damage as it is on my axe basically the increased fizz damage as it on as it is on my axe combined with the melee flat fizz and then just health on melee hit so that would be kind of the ultimate weapon because right now it's 11.6k 10.3k with that one so if this had the increased fizz and all that good stuff i think it would be better because it's also faster it kind of gives you more of everything you know it, it's just nice uh armor everything in general just pick you know fill up your resists and all of that uh on armor try to get increased melee damage while transformed and in general that's pretty much all of the like very specific things that you need i use a tourist path just some pretty good kind of leveling ish boots uh, just helps you to move around pretty fast and gives you some health and as my resists are good and everything i can don't really care i'll swap something around but this is a very basic build so and as you've already seen it does pretty well uh yeah as i have said i have done uh, the 75 monolith i did go log on pretty pretty damn easy as you saw 85 level is not really that difficult either i did do the what's her name uh, in the temporal sanctum i did that boss yeah it was kind of a joke I mean, that's level 55 area, but still it was pretty difficult with my previous two builds. And with this guy, I could literally just stand in anything there, except for the like big blast where you have to switch to the different era. Outside of that, you can just stand in anything and just blast her in the face. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, uh, overall, I would say this is probably the strongest of the primalists. I want to try out like a Spriggan form and also try out a Swarm Blade with a proking Tornadoes and Maelstrom as like a spell build, but with myself melee attacking and just proking stuff, as that's something that I really like in these games. But for now, this is what we got, and I probably next will work on an Acolyte because I have some pretty sick items. For that, I have uh, this thing, 
that I want to turn into a legendary with the, I think, uh, a staff that would become kind of something like this. Try to get the increased minion spell damage and, you know, like some make some pretty crazy stuff. So I'll see you in a couple of days. Uh, this video also was kind of delayed. I was just having some slight issues with the game in general and also with the druid because it is a little bit of a confusing mastery let's just say that there's a lot of things to explore but it is certainly cool so uh, yeah i'll see you on the next one guys thanks for watching bye